Well, it looks like the uh, French and the U.S. are both pushing for a Mideast conference that will push peace forward uh, between Israel and the Palestinians. And this is what Israel National News had to say. It says, after its failure to convince Israel to participate in a regional summit earlier this year, the French Foreign Ministry is looking to organize an international Middle East peace conference and is prepared to offer Israel and the Palestinian Authority benefit, uh, benefits packages if the two can conclude a final status agreement. The move marks a notably different uh, approach by France, which earlier this year had issued what amounted to a virtual ultimatum, threatening that if Israel and the Palestinian Authority did not reach an agreement during this year's planned summer uh, meeting, France would unilaterally recognize the Palestinian state. Well, since then, of course, uh, France's foreign minister has backtracked and dropped his uh, predecessor, Laurent Fabius' pledge to automatically recognize the Palestinian state. Now uh, the foreign minister has uh, replaced the stick with a carrot, pledging incentive packages to both Israel and the Palestinian Authority in an event uh, in, in, in the event of an agreement is reached. And of course, this was all stated at the annual United Nations ministerial meeting. Uh, and France hopes that this uh, uh, meeting or planned peace conference will be held before the end of this year. Now, when Mr. Obama addressed the UN Assembly, he also stated that Israel must know that they cannot hold on to the Palestinian territory indefinitely that at some point they must give up the territory and establish a Palestinian state. And with that said, it kind of uh, leads me to the assumption that before he leaves his uh, presidential post, that he's probably going to announce that the U.S. has recognized uh, Palestine as a state. Now, I'm not sure what it will take for him to make such an official statement. I don't know if he would need uh, Congress's permission to do so or whatever the case may be. But I have a feeling that he is going to have some type of plan that he is going to bring forth that could possibly either recognize Palestine, set the stage for recognizing Palestine, or in some way uh, create a map, present a map that may suggest that borders should be uh, laid out. You know, it's really hard to say what he will do and really what kind of power he has to do it. Certainly there is talk going around the international community and also in Israel that um, President Obama will make this move and will announce something. But much of it lies in who wins the U.S. Uh, elections uh, come November. If Hillary wins it, then his, his uh, announcement may be postponed or may um, be dropped altogether and left to the uh, next uh, president of the United States. But switching to a, another end of the world, uh, Russia is in the midst of elections right now. And uh, a, a top story, one of the top stories about that, it says top CIA analyst sees likely Putin re-election bid. Well, of course, that was to be expected by Mr. Putin. And it says basically Vladimir, uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin is likely to run for re-election in 2018 and may impose tougher uh, authoritarian rule to uh, curb unrest over the slumping economy. The CIA, CIA's top Russian uh, analyst said uh, on Tuesday. You know, I read an article the other day that indicated also that uh, Mr. Putin was bringing back the KGB. You know, it sounds like something out of a conspiracy theory magazine or media show or whatever the case may be, but that is exactly the direction he is taking. But I don't look for Mr. Putin to go anywhere soon. He's basically a dictator wrapped in a very loose form of uh, democracy. But make no mistake, he still has a lot of enemies in high places. And there's simply no question that he lives with a, the threat of death on, uh, every day. You simply never know what's lurking around the corner when you're in a position such as his. And to give you an example of the type of mentality that the Russian uh, military has, the U.S. was accused the other day of uh, killing somewhere over 60 uh, Syrian government troops. And certainly there were a lot of denials that were... Uh, presented and uh, some apologies of whatever the case may be but if it would have been Russia it would have just been business as usual. Frankly they are not concerned nor do they care about collateral damage. This whole thing about worrying about civilian casualties is basically a western situation. Certainly if Israel or the United States were to have civilian casualties in some type of military operation they take a lot of heat but if it, when it comes to Russia and Ukraine or Saudi Arabia and Yemen, or whatever the case may be, or even Yemen for that matter, they could care less about civilian casualties. 
Their mindset is to get a job done and to do it in whatever the casualties are, whether civilian or military, it doesn't matter. But to recap, uh, uh, you, you need to keep an eye on where this French peace proposal negotiations will be headed in the coming months, especially leading up to the end of the year and also the U.S. presidential elections as we draw closer to them. Believe it or not, we're only about 50 days away from electing a new president. For some of you, you will not be voting because you simply don't see a viable candidate. You simply cannot vote for Hillary because of her stance, not only on abortion, but other uh, areas of Christian principles that you don't agree with. And in many respects, you feel the same way about Mr. Trump. So many of you will decide to stay home. Well, the problem is this right here is that as you stay home, that gives the Democrat Hillary Clinton a leg up on the election because all their people are coming out. Virtually no Democrats are staying home because Hillary is going to be the candidate. But there will be a lot of Christians who will stay home because they simply can't get behind a vote for Donald Trump. But the problem is, is this right here, is that if uh, Hillary Clinton does win, this nation is going from 40% conservative to 30% conservative by the time her election um, cycle is over. We also have to realize that she will also likely have the opportunity of electing, or should I say selecting, several Supreme Court justices, and that's, that's a real problem. And frankly, that is the biggest problem uh, in the presidential election. We seem to be allowing liberal Democrats to get into the White House and then see them um, appoint liberal judges uh, to our regional courts and also to our highest court in the land. So basically, you have two options. You have a known, which is Hillary Clinton. We know what she's going to do, and we know what she's capable of doing. And you have Donald Trump, who says that he's going to do certain things that uh, would probably give conservatives a leg up, but we simply don't know what's really going to take place. So we as Christians can either stay home and allow Hillary Clinton to the known liberal president, uh, that which we know she'll be. We know all about her. She's basically just another... Barack Obama shall carry on his legacy. Or we can get up and vote and bring uh, Donald Trump to the White House and hope that the unknown will become and stay uh, conservative uh, as he's promised he would do. And I understand that he's basically a, a liberal uh, dressed up in a conservative outfit. And he's made a lot of promises that we simply don't know if he's going to keep. But we do know one thing's for sure, that Hillary Clinton is going to carry on the legacy of Barack Obama. So I would ask that you don't allow apathy to cause you not to go and vote because you're going to regret it for the next eight years, if in fact we are still here as Christians. And yes, you should vote in November based upon the fact that you are going to be here in eight years. You don't know when the rapture is going to take place and neither do I. Do I believe it's close? Yes, but I'm still going to vote. And if the Lord comes between now and then or even after the election, I'm still going to take my responsibility very seriously, and I'm going to get out there and do what I know is the best thing for who is available and running. Now, I'm not saying that uh, he would be my first choice, but frankly, there are only two candidates that have the possibility of winning. One is Donald Trump, and one is Hillary Clinton. I'm not voting for Hillary. And if I don't vote for Donald Trump, I am voting for Hillary. And I can tell you one thing for sure, that's what Hillary is counting on, that you will see Donald Trump as a liberal in a conservative clothing, and you will stay home instead of vote. Because she knows she's never going to get your vote. But if she can prevent you from casting your vote for Hillary or for, uh, for Donald Trump, then she's already won half the battle. And I'm just afraid that's exactly what's going to happen. So don't make that mistake. Get out and just make a, a, an effort to get up and vote. And pray that Donald Trump will in some way seek God between now and then and become the president that we know we need. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. You know, 150,000 people are going to die today. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. If you don't know the Lord today, you need to come to Him and ask for His forgiveness. Seek His face. Trust Him to be your Savior. It's really that simple. And you Christians, I would recommend that you get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. You know, I've got it. I believe it's in eight languages right now. And I'd like to uh, go to a ninth language, which is Portuguese. I have had, I do have a little bit of money. I think so. We got somewhere around three hundred and fifty dollars toward uh, getting that language translated. 
But if you know someone who can translate it uh, as a donation, that would be great as well, have them get a hold of me. But if we're going to have to pay for it, we still need about 200 to 250 more. So if you want to get involved with that and you'd like to donate and get this next language uh, started, um, email me or let me know uh, in some way that uh, you're interested and we'll try to make arrangements to get that taken care of. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.